Hi, everyone. It is September 27, 2019. So federal ruling could make it legal to go topless in Utah in Utah, the Mormon state, <laughs> Utah and five other states. OK, uh, so apparently women sued, two women sued the city in Fort Collins, Colorado, for the right to go topless in public. All right. Uh, the other states, Wyoming, Colorado, Utah, New Mexico, Kansas, Oklahoma. This is according to a local TV station. Uh, there are women who are suing for the right to go topless. topless. You know, I come across these articles and, well, have women just been put up to this you know, to file suits, to go top, I, because frankly, you know, it, in 60 years, it just never dawned on me that, hey, I want to go topless and I'm going to sue the city that I live in to go topless. It just never, you know, was on the radar. Uh, so is this just part of the agenda of, you know, demoralizing Americans? I don't know, but that women sued for the right to go topless, it boggles the mind considering what we are facing today, considering all of the problems that continue to increase, never get solved, the elderly going homeless, children oh, being arrested, which I'll show you an article on that. But uh, all right, there's, so, there's such, uh, it's like overwhelming how many problems we have, and this is what people focus on. Okay, uh, not everybody, but clearly something's wrong with these women. Whether they were put up to it doesn't matter. Something's wrong with anyone who files to uh, go topless. I, I'm Okay, well, something is very wrong. Parents, this is in the UK. But don't think it's only in the UK. Parents shocked as UK schools teach six to 10 year old kids to touch their private parts in beds and showers. No, it's not just happening in the UK. Do a Google search on public schools teaching, teaching how to masturbate. And you will find an awful lot of information about how our public schools are teaching kids to masturbate all over Wisconsin, California, Nevada. Well, you can just keep going on and on. As I look at the headlines, I get that the only way this has manifested is it came from us. Now, I know a lot of people get very angry at me for blaming us. We know that very sick, twisted people, the pathological psychopaths, narcissists, uh, we know that there's no way to reach them. And frankly, those who are uh, behind the curtain instructing others on the other side of the curtain to implement their agendas, and part of the agenda has been to demoralize Americans, we know they're unreachable, but they are also incurable. There's there's no cure for pathological psychopathy, narcissism. The only ones that we can reach are those around us. And, well, yeah, a lot of people also get angry when I say it's a lack of care in most people that has manifested this nightmare that we live. This is an article I'm just going to read. 
you know, uh, uh, well, just a, a few excerpts. But it's not just me saying that people don't care. A whole lot see the lack of care in Americans. Oh, they believe they care. They believe they're compassionate. They believe, they believe, they believe they're morally superior you know, to others in the world. They believe that they're exceptional. They believe whatever. But belief is not truth. You can delude yourself with your own beliefs. And if you have beliefs that you have never reevaluated, never looked at, never examined, you know, okay, I have this belief. Now, that belief doesn't manifest in how I live my life. And when you begin to see the disintegration between what you think and how you live, that there's a big gap and it doesn't match, well, that's when you can begin to do the work necessary to match your behavior with your thoughts about who you are. Not a lot of people do that work. Yeah, live free or die. Whole lot of people say they care about freedom, that it's important. Americans may mouth the words, but when push comes to shove, too many either really don't care or they are cowards deep down who will allow the status quo to carry on no matter how sorry a state of affairs has grown around it. And I'm sure all of you will agree that, oh, it's a sorry state of affairs that we got now. Um, their own ignorance is so deep that the God-given nature of our individual rights is beyond their grasp and understanding. And those words in the mouths of the timid, the weak, and unsure become mere noises, like the squeaking, squeaking of a mouse, eking out an advertising catchphrase. Their words are empty and void of any sense of duty and obligation to themselves, their families, their country, and what one must do to actually maintain a free society. Capitulating to the authorities. They will say that, and they'll even go so far as to lie outright, claiming they're doing this and that to fight for our freedom and they're doing nothing. And I've met them. I've met them. And when they are confronted, they attack because they don't want to do anything. They don't want to face their own self-centeredness. They don't want to face the lie that they're living. And when they are confronted, when they see that someone else sees that they're living a lie, what's the best defense? Oh, not to admit they're living a lie. To attack the person who sees the truth in them. A whole lot do this in the awake crowd. Yeah, I know. I've made some of you angry. If you're angry at me for saying this, then please try to analyze why you're angry. If you don't see this, then does that mean that all of us who do see the truth, that people don't really care, that they just mouth words, are they all wrong? It makes no difference to the weak of America that the Second Amendment was enacted after America 
had just come off the bloody battlefields from a terrible war against the tyranny imposed by the British, you know, the constant asinine assertion that the right to keep and bear arms is somehow only for hunting, completely ignoring the part that says, shall not be infringed, the fine words in the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution cannot help us if the ideas they express are not engraved deep within the hearts of all Americans. If the principles that you speak, the values that you think you have, the morality that you think you have, if it is not engraved deep within your heart, you're not living it. You're not living it. So this is in regards to the Second Amendment, but it's in regards to everything that has taken place. Everything. And I will tell you, everything is really, wow. Well, what is happening is that more and more people who speak the truth are getting destroyed and those who are just mouthing words and sitting around doing nothing, they, they too are getting destroyed. So many now are suffering the consequences of this world takeover by these psychopathic, uh, subhuman, quote unquote, elite. And nothing is a, more a misnomer than calling these subhuman uh, people elite, the elite. Um, so, you know, why do we have what's going on here? Why are schools teaching kids how to masturbate? In Western societies, don't you think it's odd that, you know, wow, it's not only happening in the U.S., but it's happening in the U.K., and it's happening in all these Western societies. What's going on here? Could it be a quote-unquote global agenda of the globalists? Now, I know I'm going to get comments from the free, from the flat earth people who, you know, unsub, you use the word global. I don't care. Um, why is this happening? Family shocked to learn six-year-old girl arrested, cuffed, booked into jail for tantrum at school. And if you think this is the only six-year-old girl, well, I'll be posting a video on how many children are being arrested and booked and traumatized. How does this happen in a society? It happens because the people in the society, they think they care, but they don't demonstrate that care with action. So, we have an awful lot of people who see injustice taking place, and they do nothing. And for those who say, what can we do? You can speak out every time you see an injustice happen in your community. And you can try your best to organize other adults to wipe away that injustice, to cure it, to right the wrong. And now there are so many wrongs that are so obvious that it is frightening to see that they just go on and on and on. Now, I will say that I live I live in justice. It can't be righted because in this small little apartment complex that I live in, and yesterday was another day that I'll speak about in another video, with people lying 
And, and I mean, it was a flood of lies coming. Boom, 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 boom. People know. It, most of the lies are coming from the property manager. And this is a woman who clearly loves to stir up a whole lot of drama with her lies that are so obvious. I mean, everybody knows that she's like a chronic liar. She talks about other tenants lying about them, but no one will confront her. Now, I already got the punishment for confronting her. I got an eviction notice last year and it was retracted. Oh, wow. But it was based on lies. Other neighbors knew that it was a lie. Uh, she speaks about in, uh, evicting other tenants with other tenants. And those other tenants that she's talking to get really upset about the eviction that's going to be happening to somebody that they know is really going to suffer a lot of consequences. But there's no basis for the eviction other than the property manager just doesn't like her. Okay, this is what I live pretty much like on a daily basis. The low lives in our country who think, well, their shit don't stink. When you are just one person who, yeah, is compelled to right the wrong and you don't have any other people standing with you. You get attacked and then you become the problem because you've confronted someone. <gasps> the social engineering, confront. Oh my God, that's bad. Don't do that, right? Confrontation, <gasps> that's a bad thing. No, it's a neutral word that has become weaponized against those who feel that it's very important to hold people accountable for their wrongdoing. And yet, because so many people don't do it, the weaponization has been successful. We need to change our psyche and we need to really face the whole truth, not just selecting truths out of what we will focus on. Okay, when I see the elderly and children and those who are vulnerable getting uh, well, suffering the consequences that, well, it can only happen in an Im immoral society. And I see it go on and on and on and on and on. When I can't even get, a, 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 like, you want to talk insignificant wrongs here? You know, the gossip and the crap that goes on. But the ripple effect is quite, you know, big just for this little apartment complex. I can't even get that right, that wrong righted. Because nobody will speak out. Because they're afraid. Then how do we get any right any wrong righted. How? When people are afraid to even confront a little low-life gossiper. This is, this is why we live this nightmare. Because almost no one, very few live, live the principles that they speak. Very few feel 
their principles engraved in their heart. And that takes work. And very few will do the work. A temper tantrum led to this, this six-year-old getting arrested and booked. They are traumatizing children, and we know it, that you don't have every parent screaming about what the public school system has become. Teachers continue to show up at work, and they're not screaming. And there's a whole lot to scream about, but surely this is pretty obvious, right? So what's going on with Americans? You know, here, it's, it, newsworthiness allows politicians to spread misinformation on social media. So we have these authorities and the experts and the uh, CEOs and the executives of corporations, they come out and tell us what they're doing. And yet, you don't hear a national outcry that, well, let's see, Facebook's um, Vice President of Global Affairs, Nick Clegg, said this, it is not our role to intervene when politicians speak. We do not submit speech by politicians to our independent fact checkers, and we generally allow it on the platform even when it would otherwise breach our normal content rules. But we, if we speak contrary to that official narrative, we get strikes and terminated, accounts closed. But politicians, and we know they lie all the time, social media allows them to lie. Is something wrong with this picture? Of course there's something wrong with this picture. But when they come out and say this, know that everything is going to get worse. Our voice will eventually be memoried hold, and the only voice that you'll hear is the official narrative, mainstream media, politicians, government officials, leaders of countries. That's it. That's it. You, everything will be lies. If that doesn't upset you, if this doesn't upset you. So the mayor of New York City, de Blasio, bans the use of words, illegal alien. Yeah, it's hate. It's hate speech. So New Yorkers, you're just sitting back and allowing this, and I'm not talking about everyone, but I am talking about the majority, because if it was a majority fighting, what is very clear. A communist takeover. How do you make words illegal? Hello? Free speech here? Okay. I, I can't argue the obvious my entire life long. If you cannot see that this is wrong and it bans free speech, then something is wrong with you and you need to really examine what is wrong with you. De Blasio has shown himself as a communist. So, a banning, you're letting one or two or a few individuals determine for you how to behave and what to say, and what you can't say. This is not the United States that I lived in, nor did you, 
not too long ago. So when you see these very obvious things taking place, you need to be screaming and get that guy out of office now. Oh, well, he's going to really get it because I'm not going to vote for him. Do you understand that we have criminals, criminals who are mayors, governors, congressmen and women, leaders of our country. We've got criminal governments all over the place. It's obvious now. How did this manifest? It manifested because most people do not care and they mouth words. Unbelievable. New York Post. It's now against the law in New York City to threaten someone with a call to immigration authorities or refer them as an illegal alien when motivated by hate, when motivated by hate. Well, using the term illegal alien, that's enough to motivate someone or to d determine that someone's motivated by hate. All right. The idiocy that has just grown in leaps and bounds in this country, this is dangerous. Idiocy is dangerous. So, I don't know how do you get people to really care, genuinely care? Outrageous assault on free speech? Of course it is. Of course it is. So, what has happened to the American people? That these people actually believe that they can do this without without being run out of office because they know they know the psyche of the American people they know Americans on the whole don't care about anything except their own life and that needs to be changed here IRS testing behavioral analytics to verify online users now, I will link below to everything, all of these articles, but the IRS is tracking you, surveilling you, law enforcement is surveilling everybody. Um, we've got, <laughs> we have courts actually, actually coming out with rulings. Police have no duty to protect you. They have no duty to protect you because the police don't work for you. Oh, you're the schmuck who pays their salary, but they protect the quote-unquote elite. They don't protect you. So actually our federal courts now are, well, telling, the, telling you the truth. And still, most are just sitting back and doing nothing. Yeah, even the army. <laughs> Don't go see the Joker. Don't go see the Joker. U.S. Army warns of potential incel. All right. Okay. Did you ever hear of incel? I didn't. Well, yeah, incel. It's involuntarily, involuntarily celibate. Celibate people. They're violent because they can't find, uh, you know, another, they can't, they, they're having trouble having intimate relationships. They're involuntarily celibate and they're going to cause, cause mass shootings when the Joker premieres on October 4th. Are you kidding me? Okay, yeah. U.S. have sounded the ominous alarm that 
they fear moviegoers flocking to theaters to see the Joker. There will be a mass shooting. They don't know what theater. They don't know what theater. But it's going to be by involuntary celibates. You know, I had to look up celibate to see, okay, maybe there's another, you know, definition that I don't know about. And there's not. U.S. Army Criminal Investigation Command was issued Monday. Warning commanders at U.S. Army Fort Sill in Oklahoma that a law enforcement agency in Texas working with the FBI had uncovered disturbing and very specific chatter in the dark web regarding the targeting, targeting of an unknown movie theater during the release. So this is like the Aurora shooting, the uh, opening of the Batman movie. All right. But yeah, this is, um, it's, here, okay. Incels are known to harbor extreme and violent misogynistic and uh, misanthropic outlooks, including sympathies toward the alt-right fascist movement. Okay. It's the alt-left who are the fascists. And, uh, well, let's just, let's, look, this is, this is, so narcissistic, you know, the projection onto others of what the narcissist does, that's one of their main characteristics, projection. The alt-left projecting onto the alt-right, that they are the fascists. Uh, is this not a fascist move by your mayor in New York City? to ban words in this free United States of America. Fascist, dictator. He's a dictator. You have a dictator in New York City and you just let him sit there year after year, destroying your own constitutional rights. Well your natural rights, your God-given rights. And I don't say that in a religious way. You're a human being. Um, can you not say what you want to say without the fear of the state, the force of the state coming down at you? Okay. Well, I guess a lot of people really truly are status and hmm. see the problem is, is we have to suffer the consequences of all of the people who do nothing and allow this to continue to go on. Yes, incels. Incels. They are individuals who express frustration from perceived disadvantages to starting intimate relationships. Incel extremists idolize violent individuals like the Aurora movie theater shooter. They idolize the Joker character. But, okay, this is what our U.S. Army sent out to service members this memo. Um, service member, members were told to be aware of their surroundings and to identify two escape routes when entering theaters. If a shooting is to take place, soldiers must then run, hide, and fight. The memo explained, run if you can. If you're stuck, hide, or shelter in place, and stay quiet. If a shooter finds you, fight with whatever you can. This is what the U.S. Army is telling soldiers that may go to the see the Joker. Out of an abundance of caution to help keep our soldiers and their families safe. Hey, soldiers. So courageous. Run and hide. Stay quiet. Is something wrong here? 
celibate people turning violent, soldiers run and hide. Okay, I I'm sorry. But, yeah, there's something bizarre in this, and uh, the uh, well, they want to make all of us crazy, violent, and once labeled that, then they take your guns away. So, all of you who are involuntarily celibate, watch out. Watch out. The lunacy, idiocy, has grown to a point where it's truly hard. You know, when you're stuck with being someone who's a rational, reasonable, you know, uh, critically thinking human being, um, well, I said it was going to get harder. A whole lot of us said it was going to get an awful lot harder. <laughs> now, now, yeah, soldiers run and hide. Don't do anything to try to help those in the theater or try to get that guy who's the mass shooter. Uh, the involuntary celibate, you know, person. Um, and, hey, don't expect the police to protect you because that's not their duty. Uh, do you see that our country has drastically changed? Surveillance technology that will watch us all, all the time. Wide angle motion imagery is a surveillance game changer and it's here. Yeah, it's here. Hey, but you guys who, you know, want to go topless, yeah, spend your time and energy to try to get the laws changed in your city so you can just walk around topless while we're being taken over, eyes in the sky. Well, you can read about it, but I think all of you know, Orwellian Nightmare, six U.S. cities make list of most surveilled places in the world. Yeah. Uh, what are those cities? Well, top 10, Atlanta. Atlanta, Georgia, top 10. The other cities, Chicago, San Francisco, Boston, Washington, D.C., San Diego, and... I'm surprised I don't see New York. That's very surprising. Uh, this is what we're living. Our, we are no longer free at all, if we ever were, but we sure did have far more freedom not too long ago. And we are seeing that freedom be destroyed. And if you think that there is, hey, I'm going to vote for that guy because he's going to protect our freedom, then you are sorry. Your childlike thinking needs to be examined. There is only one way, and I don't think it's possible at this point. I, do, I certainly don't think it's possible because we do not have the numbers of Americans who will unite, stand, you know, together and fight this takeover. Fight for their own freedom. Fight for their children's freedom. And when that happens, the authorities can do whatever the hell they want to do. That's why we're living this nightmare. That's why. Social credit will shift law in the West from constitution to analytics and algorithm. Uh, we have human beings who, who create the algorithms. So we're going to have a few creating algorithms based on whose interpretation of the Constitution, based on the psychopathic, subhuman, quote-unquote, elite. So, what can we do? 
live your life with integrity, live honesty, speak honestly, and try your best to continue to get through to Americans. And I don't Everything that's taking place is very sad. It's just unbelievably sad. But it comes from, yeah, Americans mouthing words that they do not live. And if you are one of them, the best thing that you can do is face the truth because frankly, we, I was, I didn't understand that, oh, what I thought I was decades ago, it wasn't until I faced my own truth to realize I was full of shit. But until you do that, you won't grow. You will remain deluded in your thinking and you will be part of the problem. No ands, ifs, or buts. All links are below.